the one thing I think, uh, I am surprised how many player options there are, or at least player goodies, that are in Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons, because there are a variety of magical weapons, uh, magical items associated with dragons that players will be hungry to get. But there's also items that grow in power, mm -hmm. which, because of the radiation basically coming off of dragons and, and their nature and the prime material, prime material plane and how they affect everything, that hoard that they have is slowly affected by their lair. And I love this concept because it allows magical items to grow with the players, mm -hmm. especially if they have a dragon patron, but all kinds of strangeness comes out of that. Yeah, uh, It really kind of delves deeply into to lair options, but you also have dragon essentially gifts. Much like the boons in the in the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. They're not entirely unlike feats, but scale, right? So all of these options are yet more examples of us giving people this huge array of options to give their character some kind of draconic ability, or for the DM to give the characters draconic right. abilities. And so well, the player can choose the new race, yeah. spells, subclasses, feats. The draconic gifts and the horde magic items and the other magic items in the book are an opportunity for the dungeon master to give players these gifts. And the idea in the book is that these gifts, which are, as you say, just like the supernatural gifts in the dungeon master's guide, but these are flavored specifically for dragons, uh, we wanted this notion that there could actually be something special you get because of an encounter with a dragon. And so we tell you in the book, you might get this gift because a dragon who's friendly to you actually bestowed it upon you, or you might get it because you slayed the dragon. And the book has this notion of being a dragon slayer actually giving you potentially powers and these magic items, the horde magic items, if you happen to find one in a dragon's horde, that can grow more powerful and gain different abilities if you soak it in different dragon's hordes. Because the book talks a lot about how dragons are a manifestation of the material plane itself. They are, we would often talk in the design process, Dragons are to the material plane what angels are to the upper planes and, uh, and other celestials are and what fiends are to the lower planes. They are an incarnation of the plane's essence. And dragons gain power from the wealth and other things that they amass, but then they also, their own power sort of suffuses it the longer they're with it. And items, especially magic items, that stay in that sort of magic stew around a dragon in time can gain this ability to be a horde item where it actually can start changing uh, depending on uh, how many hordes you soak it in. But this is too connected to dragon slaying because this process of having a magic item gain a new ability by soaking in a horde takes time, but you can speed it up if you slay a dragon. Uh, and so this is a way for us to create some new incentives for people, not just adventurers, but also for villains to be dragon slayers, uh, because they are not only maybe trying to get the wealth that's in the dragon's horde, but they're, act they're trying to get the literal power mm -hmm. uh, that is in it. And so you can imagine a DM not only giving these, these boons to the player characters, but the DM could also be giving them to villains. Uh, because you could have, easily have a campaign where you have villains who are hunting down metallic dragons, for instance, and getting these horde magic items and various draconic gifts, and the heroes have to stop them before they get too powerful and also to maybe protect these dragons uh, who, who need their help. And this, this to me is one of the wonderful things about D&D's dragons is 
they are so varied in terms of their abilities, their outlooks, their personalities. You can never assume when you meet a dragon, as fearsome as it might look, that it's a foe. The dragon might be a potential friend. And this book delves into that a lot, uh, that dragons could end up being your greatest allies or your mightiest foes. And the same dragon could be both, uh, depending right. on, you know, did you piss it off? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, or or did you, were you formally foes, but you have uh, mended things between you, and now you are uh, closely knit allies. Right. Uh, yeah. You, you 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 really hit the nail on the head. What I also like is the constant reminder, like, you know, they can polymorph eventually into people. So you may be running into dragons on the regular and not know it. Or they could be in charge of like a criminal syndicate. You know, right. <laughs> right. like you, you don't know how many dragons there may be. But uh, the, I, I the, love it. Yeah, the high the high priest in a benevolent temple could be a dragon.